In this video, we'll discuss some more details on the cross-entropy loss that we use all the time in deep learning. In particular, we will relate it to the KL divergence between two distributions and to the maximum likelihood estimator. Let's dive right in. Cross-entropy, KL divergence, and maximum likelihood. Let us start by recapping some concepts from information theory. First, let's have a look at the information entropy which you've probably seen in a standard machine learning course before, for example, in the context of decision trees. So the entropy can be written like this, and it quantifies the uncertainty about a random variable. You may have seen this formula written in this way here for a random variable with k possible values, but this expectation up here is just the general form. So the entropy is the number of bits needed to code an event from a distribution p of x. For example, if you flip a coin and the coin is a fair coin, then the probability of coming up heads and tails is 0.5 each, and then there's actually one bit of information in the resulting event. If you, on the other hand, know that the coin always comes up tails, then you don't need any bits of information in order to encode that, but there's actually no information in the outcome because you already know the outcome before you observe the event. All right, so that's information entropy. Now the cross entropy is similar. It only differs in that there's another distribution q of x here instead of the p of x up there. We still take an expectation with respect to samples coming from this distribution p, but we quantify the log probability of this distribution q of x. Now, you can interpret this as the average number of bits needed to code an event drawn from p of x, but using a code that is optimized sort of for the wrong distribution, q of x. And the way in which we'll use this is that this q here will be the probability distribution that our model outputs, and the p is the distribution of the true data. And we try to get the q to resemble the p as much as possible, but it will typically not be perfect. And that's why the cross entropy will typically be larger than the information entropy. And I'd like to emphasize that this formula here, um, and also this formula here in, in the version with just a, a random variable with k possible outcomes, is just the general form of the cross entropy loss that we've already seen before. So the KL divergence is also related to both of these. It's a widely used way to assess the similarity of two distributions in machine learning, such as distributions P and Q. It is the cross entropy between the two distributions minus the entropy of P. And it's actually zero if P and Q are equal, but unfortunately it's not symmetric. So it matters that this here is P comes first and then Q because, well, um, the DKL of p q would be the information uh, that's sort of the cross entropy of q p minus the information entropy of q and that would in general be different than um, the term up here and we'll see in a bit how they differ all right so that's a kl divergence and next i would like to talk about maximum likelihood estimation and how that relates to cross entropy and to the KL divergence. And maximum likelihood estimation is a really intuitive concept. So we just want to maximize the probability of some data under our model. And we would like to do that by estimating a model parameter theta. So in general, um, those model parameters for deep learning will be the weights of our neural networks. So let's consider a set of M examples drawn from this true but unknown data generating distribution P sub data of X. So we don't know this data generating distribution and we'll have a model P sub model of X parameterized by this parameter theta or the set of parameters theta. And that's a parametric family of distributions. And we want to set these parameter vector um, theta to make 
this distribution, P model, as similar to the P data as possible. The maximum likelihood estimator, denoted theta sub ml, is then simply the parameter vector that maximizes this probability of the true data x under the model P sub model. And the equation number I'm giving here is from this very nice book, Deep Learning, that we're using throughout much of the course by Ian Goodfellow, Yoshua Benjo, and Aaron Cornwell. And as I mentioned before, this is a freely available book, and here's a URL for it. All right, so this is the maximum likelihood estimator. And now we'll relate this to the cross entropy loss and to the KL divergence. Particularly, what we'll show is that the maximum likelihood estimator actually also minimizes the cross entropy and the KL divergence. So if we minimize cross entropy loss, then we maximize the likelihood of our data under our model. And that's precisely what we want. So we want to change the model by changing its parameters, here denoted as theta, in order to make this data as likely as possible. So in the equivalence proof between the maximum likelihood estimator and the minimizer of the cross entropy loss and the KL divergence goes as follows. First, we just spell out the definition of the maximum likelihood estimator. It's a maximizer of the data under the model. Then we realize that this data here is a set of data points, and this is the probability of that. So we just spell this out as the product of all the individual um, probabilities of the individual data points. Next, we go from taking a product over probabilities to a sum of log probabilities. So just taking the log is a strictly monotonic transformation and doesn't change the maximizer. Then we realize that these data points here, well, they actually, um, this, they come from this set here and the set is defined by this data generating distribution, P sub hat. We don't know the true data generating distribution. We only know this empirical data generating distribution. And so we can write this um, individual samples from this set as just, well, the expectation over the data generating distribution here. Next, we just put a minus here and go to the argmin. And then, lo and behold, this is the definition of our cross entropy. It's the expectation of the negative log likelihood of the data under the model, where the data comes from this empirical data generating distribution. All right, uh, we don't stop there, but we can now also add this term, which is the log probability of the empirical data generating distribution. And this doesn't depend on the model parameters, theta. So it doesn't change the minimizer at all. And then we have that this is actually equivalent to the KL divergence between this empirical data generating distribution and the model predictive distribution. So recall that we're trying to minimize this distance between these different distributions as measured by this KL divergence. And if we manage to exactly match the empirical data generating distribution, then this term would actually be exactly zero because then the cross entropy would equal the entropy. And well, the KL divergence is just defined to be the cross entropy minus the entropy. So if those two match, then it would be zero. All right, and now I would like to give you some more intuition about what this maximum likelihood estimator is and how it relates to the two different versions of KL divergence. I mentioned before that KL divergence is not symmetric, so you can have the KL divergence between P and Q and the KL divergence between Q and P, and those are different. And what the maximum likelihood estimator tries to do, it tries to change our model Q to make the observed data most likely under it. And that's achieved by this left version here. In this plot here, the blue line is the observed data, the P of X, and our model is this Q of X. In this case here, a Gaussian distribution, and we can change the mean and variance of this distribution in order to shift this around. 
to make samples from the blue distribution most likely under it. So the maximum likelihood estimator actually tries to fit all the data. So fitting just one of the Gaussian bumps, as you would do over here, gives you really high likelihood for samples from this blue part of the distribution, of the true distribution, but would give very low probability to samples from this part of the true data. And that's why the maximum likelihood estimator does not choose this. So the left case in this figure is what the maximum likelihood estimator goes for, trying to make all the data likely under the model. And the right case, that would try to make samples from Q likely under P. And that's also a valid use case, but that's not what the maximum likelihood estimator does. All right, this brings us to the end of this video. And as always, I'd like to leave you with some questions to think about for yourself. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.